Hi trail grazers and welcome back to our channel. We have been gone for quite a few weeks because we have just been so busy with life. A lot of exciting things are happening to us. As you may know, I will be retiring very shortly. I have about a week left and then boy are things going to change for our lives. Uh, one of the big things is that we are going to be going on road trips. It is middle of December, so we will not be taking our trailer or our tent, but we want to do some road trips. And because my truck is a big diesel, and because of the price of diesel, we will be traveling in Jim's smaller car. Not his old clunker that he used to drive, because earlier this week, we got we traded that one in on a Ford Explorer, which is a smaller car, and a, it uses regular gas and it will be much less expensive for us to take road trips on. The great thing for us is the freedom to go wherever we want and be gone for however long we want and not have to worry about using up vacation time or having to be back to work. I will hardly know how that feels. So what we have realized is we need meals a little bit different than we have been doing so far because these are not for taking in our trailer, not for taking in the tent, but rather we are going to be doing um, traveling uh, car trip, road trips where we will most likely stay in motels at night, but then during the day we will stop and eat meals along the way that we have prepared ourselves. So that requires MREs, uh, MRE type meals, and the first one that we're going to do is this minestrone. Now, earlier today, we did a sister video to this one for Rose Red Homestead with minestrone soup. Only we are pressure canning that. In fact, it's finishing up out there in the canner right now. We may have to take a quick break and go check on it here in a few minutes. But for this channel, this is where we do most of our freeze drying now. On Rose Red, sometimes I'll do uh, a combination freeze drying and dehydrating if it's the same food and it works out. But when I'm just going to be freeze drying a food, those videos are going to be on uh, trail grazers. And so we're going to freeze dry this minestrone soup. It is delicious, by the way. And um, then we're going to package it up as for MREs that we can take on our uh, road trips. So let's get started with that. I'm really excited about this possibility. This is a little bit new for us, but we'll be able to leverage a lot of our current foods that we have out there in our food bank and also leverage the knowledge that we already have about packing up for our trailer and our tent. So I'm going to turn on our butane stove. And I'm going to put about three tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom here. Minestrone soup is the classic Italian vegetable soup, and it is so wonderful. And the great thing about freeze drying it is that we can put all of the ingredients in it before we freeze dry. When we pressure can, we cannot put in the pasta or the rice, whichever one you choose to use. I use uh, pasta. But with freeze drying, we can put it all in and then we can freeze dry it and then we'll be packaging it in mylar bags and uh, taking it with us where we go. Okay, so I think that's about done. Now, the recipe for this is going to be on our website. Now, we only have one website, and it is our primary uh, channel's website is roseredhomestead.com. I'll put the address right here, and uh, when you get to that first page, just scroll to the very bottom, and there are downloads there, a number of different downloads, and just look for the one that says minestrone soup two ways and it will be a combination of how to pressure can it and then how to freeze dry it so all of the amounts of ingredients are going to be there so we're going to go ahead and add this is uh, celery carrots and onions about two medium onions four carrots four ribs of celery and we're going to just saute these until they get a little bit soft and the onions get translucent. So we will be back when that happens. So these vegetables are ready, the onions are translucent. 
I'm going to add just a sprinkle of salt. <gasps> That's not a sprinkle. And we're going to add minced garlic. That's about four or five cloves of fresh garlic. And then this is four cups of seasonal vegetables. And it doesn't matter the ratio, just four cups total. I have butternut squash, potatoes, and green beans in here. These were fresh green beans. And now what we want to do is to have these warm up as well. And because there's no liquid in the bottom, I am going to use one cup of the four cups of water that we will ultimately be putting in. So I'm just going to put a cup of water in the bottom. And then this pot does not have a lid. So that's one from a different pot, but it works just fine. We're just going to let this simmer gently for probably about five to eight minutes to sort of soften up those um, seasonal vegetables. So we will be back at that point. All right, so we're ready for the next step, which is to add almost all of the rest of the ingredients and then let it simmer until it is done. Isn't this a beautiful mixture, a beautiful medley of vegetables, beautiful colors. All right. We're going to add to those colors. Here comes two large cans of petite chopped tomatoes. I'm adding one can of tomato paste, but you could also add, this is a six ounce can, or you could add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Just a little bit of extra, more concentrated tomato flavor for this. Then we're going to add about three to four cups of cannellini beans. You can do it uh, two cans. Or these I soaked last night and then cooked this morning. So these are home cooked cannellini beans. And I had a few extra, so I'm putting closer to four than three. And that is okay as well. Then I'm going to put in two quarts of vegetable broth. This is from Costco. It's organic. And it just ekes out unless you stab it. So this is two quarts of the broth, and it is vegetable broth. This is really, if you have a Costco membership, we really stock up on this stuff. I make chicken broth like crazy, but I don't make a lot of beef broth, nor do I make a lot of vegetable broth. I could, but I just haven't. Then I'm going to put in four bay leaves. We're going to try to retrieve them later on. <clears throat> About a fourth of a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more of crushed red pepper flakes. And then this is my oregano from Italy. And I'm going, oh, it smells heavenly. I'm going to put in two rounded teaspoons. And the same of whole thyme. Now I'm putting in two teaspoons of salt. 
and you may want to add more later but you know you can taste it and add it as you like and then we like a lot of pepper I don't know that's half a teaspoon all right then we're stirring this up now we want this fully cooked I'm going to let this simmer for probably about 15 minutes and then I'm going to add two cups of this pasta and then we will let it cook until the pasta is al dente and then at the end I will add the juice from one lemon doesn't matter the size this is about a fourth of a cup so we will bring you back when the soup then is ready with the pasta and the lemon juice added. Oh, is this just gorgeous? We cannot make it this thick when we pressure can it, but when we freeze dry it, we certainly can. So I did add for this recipe for freeze drying more cannellini beans, which I love. All right, we're going to let this simmer. And probably it will take half an hour, maybe 40 minutes to get everything all done. We want it done completely. So we will be back when we're ready to spread it into the trays. Well, here we are. The soup is completely done. I hope you can see it with all these trays in place. But it is stunningly beautiful. And you can see that the pasta is done. The lemon juice is in. And I did not add the extra three cups of water on the video, but I did while it was cooking. So this is about the consistency that we're going to get. Now, because we want even distribution of solids throughout every one of the Mylar bags that we're going to have, this makes a double batch and we can only do four at a time. Ours is a medium size uh, Harvest Right freeze dryer. So I am going to divvy up the solids as evenly as possible before and then get all of them if possible as many as I can by the scoop full and divide them across all eight trays and then we will not be adding the liquid while we're here because it's too tricky to get them all the way out to the freezer we're going to freeze these overnight in our regular freezer and then we will load four of them into the freeze dryer in the morning and then that will take probably 24 hours minimum to finish and then we will put the second batch in but once we get the first batch done we'll bring you back so that we can show you what we're going to do all right, the next thing that we're going to do then is stack these. And we will be getting the liquid in them. And we'll do this other one just the very same way. So we're going to put this out there, take this broth out there, and then we're going to fill up this cup because this cup can reach in between the trays and we can fill the trays with the amount of broth and it looks like we have pretty much four pints left and so there's going to be just a little bit over a cup of this broth that will then go in over all of these uh, solids and then when we're done one tray will go into one mylar bag and it will be enough for the two of us to have a meal. So we're going to head out to the freezer and get this process started. And we won't see you for a couple of days until our first batch is completely out of the freeze dryer. And then we will show you what we're going to do with it to make it into a quick and easy meal, an MRE. So we'll see you then. Well, here we are two days later and our soup is done. So here it is right here. And um, I'm just home from work and it finished just a little bit ago. So Jim took it out of the freeze dryer and we have it here ready to go. So it's styrofoam, 
Everything is very freeze-dried and ready to go. So what we're going to do now is something a little bit different than what we usually do. Usually we put our freeze-dried food in a two-quart jar and then we vacuum seal it. And we call that our food bank. We have a lot of food out there in our food bank that is freeze-dried. And then when we get ready to go on the trail, then we open up one of those two-quart bags and put whatever it is we want from the jar in serving size portions. And then we will vacuum seal it in a Mylar bag and take it with us. So today we're going to try something just a little bit different. We are going to put in this um, Mylar bag, and we got these from freeze from Harvest right, they came with our freeze dryer. And we are going to put one tray worth of soup in here because we think that one tray is about one quart, which is about the amount that I usually fix for soup for Jim and me. We usually eat about a quart of soup for a meal. So I'm just gonna cut this in chunks and it naturally breaks. I don't have to do a lot of cutting at all. I'm going to put a little bit of this, just a little bit, in this small bowl and we are going to reconstitute it. I want to be sure and get some pasta in there as well, just to check to see how it goes. And then the rest we're going to put in this Mylar bag. And so when we go on our car trips, our road trips, we'll take these Mylar bags and I think I've just figured out how we are going to work with them and we'll save that for another video. So this will hold a full tray of soup even if I were to add this to it, it would still hold it. So the next thing that we're going to do is these are 300 cc Oxygen absorber, still very soft and pliable, so I know it's still good. I'm going to drop one of those in there. <clears throat> and then we are going to use our Weston vacuum sealer and seal. So it is sealed right across here. Now I did not vacuum seal these because the oxygen absorber will pull the air out and pull the bag in anyway. And even if it doesn't uh, squish it up like a vacuum seal would, the oxygen will be removed and leave only nitrogen in there, which is just perfectly fine. So I will label and date this and then it is ready to go. I always get the question, well, how much water do you add? And I have tried mathematically by volume, by weight, by all different kinds of means to try to figure that out. And it really varies every single time. And even with the same food, it varies. So my best guess right now is just to eyeball it. And when it looks like I've got about enough water in there, that's how much I start with. <clears throat> And the good thing is, these are already softening really well, that this is soup, and so if I get it too runny, I can add a little bit more soup. If I don't get it runny enough, I can add a little bit more water. And that, of course, will work as long as I have extra soup to go around. Otherwise, if I have to eat soup that's a little bit runny, oh well, it should work just fine. So I'm going to let that sit while I package up the other three, and then we're going to come back. So this is the last one, and it is labeled and dated, Minestrone Soup, 12-12 of 22. Um, this looked beautiful in the trays. It went into these bags perfectly, and it smells fantastic. The true test is, how does it taste now that we are going to be rehydrating it? So this has rehydrated less than 10 minutes. It looks like everything is rehydrated, but let's give it a test. Okay, I have a bean and a couple of uh, pieces of pasta here. Those are fantastic. 
it came out great. And so pouring boiling water over it for about 10 minutes is all that is needed. You just sort of have to judge how much water. Uh, since this was about a quart of soup, you can sort of guesstimate how much boiling you water you might need. Now when we travel, do car trips, we're thinking ahead now because we're entering a phase of our lives where we're going to be able to do a lot more car tripping in the winter time when we won't be pulling our trailer and we won't be doing tent camping, but just in our car going from one location to the other and staying in hotels or motels along the way, um, we're going to um, save on our trip expenses by taking a lot of our own food. What we're not going to want to do in the winter time because one of our trips is going to be up to the northwest where it is very snowy and cold. We are not going to want to stop at rest areas and try to boil water. And so I'm working on a solution right now um, that is energy efficient as possible and doesn't cost a whole lot. Um, and so we'll bring that to you as well. I think we have it solved, but we have to test it out just a little bit. But in terms of this minestrone soup, it turned out fantastic. So I'm very pleased with that. And I hope you will try the recipe. And again, the recipe is on our website. And the link to the website is below in the video description. I also showed it at the very beginning of the video. So happy trails, and we will see you out there somewhere. Thank you for joining us.